Well, I'm getting the car out of the bag and joining on the bandwagon of one of these photography videos where basically I talk about my gear. Hey. Just a little disclaimer, I guess the main reason for this video is I just want to compare my kit which has grown drastically in the last year. So I just want to kind of like, you know, do a little video memo of what exactly I have this year and then just to see in next year if my kit is going to grow or maybe it's going to get smaller because I do sell some stuff and I get some new stuff in or, you know, just kind of like to see how my mind actually changed what exactly I needed in my kit and how exactly my hobby pretty much progresses. So let's begin. The biggest change in last year was I got this baby over here. It's Lumix G9, super expensive for something that I think is like three, four years old. But luckily enough, there is a shop up in Belfast called Vex Photos. Absolutely highly recommend. The guys are absolutely fantastic and they actually price their kits depending on the usage. So if there was more clicks on the camera, it'll be much more cheaper than something that might be straight out of the box, maybe has a couple of hundred shots on it. So got this baby second hand for about half the price and a lot of my friends and my followers on Instagram have been an absolutely great help and I pretty much got half of the camera price basically donated to me so a lot of thanks guys because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get this kit because they're over a thousand just for the body itself and it's a lot of money to spend when you're in a small salary so I not taking it for granted that it was one of these opportunities that if the camera wasn't going for half the price if i didn't get any help with it i wouldn't have been able to get it so it was just like a leap of faith that like things sometimes happen for a reason and then everything else just kind of like keeps falling into place so i guess the reason why i got this camera was because i needed a bigger body i needed image stabilization and also i read a lot about how it is so ergonomically designed like yes of course the best practice is use both hands for your camera but it's just even with one hand it doesn't put any strain on your hand and it's just especially with all of the buttons everything is just designed fantastically it was a bit intimidating to start off with because there is so many function buttons that you can actually program on this baby but yeah, I'm overall, I'm still learning, so there's a lot of things I need to learn from this camera, but I'm overall really happy with this camera. And I didn't get it with the kit lens because the kit lens was way too expensive, and I sold my Lumix GF6 kit lens because in the end I just kind of like ended up using a lot of prime lenses, so I just didn't really see myself really using the kit lens that was coming for it and the money that I would have been paying for it. I'd rather put it somewhere else down the line just to basically make sure that I have a better lens. So let's move on to lenses. After I got my Lumix GF6, I was using a kit lens for about one to two years. And of course, if you're talking to anyone in photography, the first thing to tell you when you're actually asking them what lens you should go for, they go nifty 50. Um, well, it's micro four thirds. The sensors on these are much more smaller, so the closest to the 50mm lens is the 25mm that you can see on the body in here. Um, it's f1.7 and the only thing that I'll say about it is, when you first get it and you don't really know much about the prime lenses, it does a good job and it does a really good job in low light because you know the aperture like f1.7 it's pretty much made for something that's going to be shooting in the dark. But I do have to say, at the moment, I do have my eyes set on Leica f1.4 just because I got another Sigma lens that I'll talk to you about in a few minutes. And I just feel like I do need that f1.4 because a lot of my stuff has been shot in the dark. And if I want to use my 25mm, I would really love to have aperture as low as possible. And I just think it does make a difference when you work with lenses that go up to f1.4. So it's on my wish list at the moment, but when I'm looking to sell this lens, I'd still need about, I'd say, 400 euros for the lens. So at the moment, I just 
don't see it logical to basically spend that much money on just a lens that I may or may not use this year because pandemic but you never know things might happen and I might actually be able to get a new lens so my next lens that I got was something that I have a love-hate relationship with depending on the day and depending on the subject as well so this is my vintage Helios 44M I got it from I think it was Ukraine and eBay for like 44 euros super cheap it's all manual which is a nightmare when you've never shot all manual before and you have to relearn like what exactly it is to actually shoot with manual when your camera just basically says nope you're doing everything yourself but I have to say it does create really good effects for swirly bokeh which is exactly the reason why I got it for if you're buying them for micro four thirds must be warned because this was something that I actually did as a rookie mistake until my friend Tom actually helped me out with you do have to invest in a speed booster which is this baby over here when I first got it I put it on my camera I was super excited and everything was like super 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 zoomed in um, as far as I know it's 58 mil so as far, as far as I understood it was like as if I was shooting out a lens that's 116 mil so super zoomed in but i might be wrong because on the technical side of things i am not that great i'm still learning all of that stuff so when you buy a speed booster it brings it back to something that's equivalent to 58 mil and it is amazing like i think the biggest thing that i shoot this with is summer season when i'm shooting macro so any bugs any flowers any plants of any kind even trees It'll be one of the lenses that I bring with me if I'm going to the likes of botanical gardens, if I am going to hikes for example, because on hikes you either shoot landscapes, maybe a bit of kind of like, you know, casual stuff, but there's a lot of stuff for macro shooting and anytime that I forget this lens, if I'm going hiking or anything, I have lots of regrets. I do want to go back to the same spot and bring specifically this lens. My probably the most used lens at the moment and a massive game changer was actually recommended to me by the local camera shop because when you start off with 25mm which is like 50mm equivalent you kind of like have an idea then which direction you want to go with the lenses because when you start off you have no idea it's like oh I want to shoot this I want to shoot that and I want it to be this big or this small and you just kind of go and it's like well I don't know what I'm talking about and people will not know what the hell I'm talking about so after using 25 mil for about a year I realized that I am getting more into street photography which I absolutely hated when I started shooting street photography so uh, contradictions here we are so I basically was thinking what exactly I needed and because of my kid and everything I just felt I needed a bit of a wider angle and my local camera shop I just asked them it's like hey listen what wide angle Lumix lenses do you have and they were like well we have this and this but we recommend you this it was a bit of a fortune and <sighs> I did have to sell my surface tablets just to get this baby but well worth it so I've got 16 mil Sigma f 1.4 and it is the lens that if you ask me which lens is like the only lens that I bring with me I'll be absolutely delighted with no matter what I do it will be this baby over here I do street at night a lot of people are saying micro four thirds don't really perform that well in the dark this lens it does sharp images it does wide angle that are absolutely sweet and at f 1.4 and I shoot around at 10 seconds on a tripod the images come out absolutely amazing and I've also printed them up to I think it was I think it was A2, A2 or A0 size but I'm pretty too sure it was A2 and yeah I'll have to check that because now that's actually building me it's like was it A2 or A0 I know it's bigger than A3 because A3 was something that I could print on my old camera so I had basically the image size go up with the new kit but yeah I printed the pictures 
Of course, there's gonna be a bit of noise. It's in the dark and it's still your Micro Four Third sensor that you're having on your camera. But I have to say, a lot of people discredit it because I think they just kind of like, you know, pixel peek where they just basically zoom in on the image on computer and go, this is nasty. You wouldn't get that on a full frame camera. But yeah, printed this stuff and shot in the dark. And it's something that I do quite often and it worked absolutely fantastically. Um, I do also shoot portraitures indoors with it because I only have 1.5 meter square space of floor space to deal with so it's like literally imagine like 1.5 meters of a square and you have to basically put a backdrop, put myself as a model, put the lights, put the tripod, everything into it while you have a dog running around. So, I know people say they're not really made for portraits, but it's okay. Like, I wouldn't use it if I had a, basically, a proper project with another model to do it, and I needed to do a fantastic job. I'd use my 25mm for that. But when you're working indoors, and you gotta work with what you got, definitely something to go for. So, yeah, if I'm going anywhere, I used to bring my 25mm, but I feel very restricted with it. Um, this lens... It was my go-to next because it's wide angle so I can actually do a bit more with it but I actually saw second-hand lens that I specifically got for travel I actually had this lens on the camera over here so I just had to switch the lenses around so I can show you this boy what are we well it's to start off, it's a Lumix zoom lens. It's the only zoom lens that I own and the only reason why I got it was because it was going dirt cheap online. It was barely used. The guy who was selling it, he basically got it to go to Japan and I was like, that sounds like a dream. But unfortunately COVID happened so Japan didn't happen and he wasn't sure when exactly he's going to be going. I do feel sorry for him because if I could go to Japan, I'd go to Japan. So when someone tells you that to cancel such a holiday of a lifetime, I was like, bro, I feel your pain. So he was selling this kit and yeah, I got it for fairly, fairly cheap. It is the first release because as far as I know, they did release the weather sealed versions of these. But like, I mean, yeah, I bring my lenses out in all sorts of weathers. I do take the chances, but they worked so far, so fingers crossed, touch wood. I love my big bodied cameras, but you know, if you're going out somewhere, you don't want to be bringing literally a bag full of lenses because when you're shooting with primary lenses, there is no zoom, girl. There is no zoom. You just walk whatever you need to walk and if you can't get that far, well, you ain't getting that shot. So, if I'm doing something casual, it'll just be nice to bring just one lens that has you covered on all aspects of it. Also, when we were able to actually travel within our county, I did go to Holtcliffe and like this is when I just kind of like realized that I kind of need to bring it with me anywhere I go just in case because there was a couple of birds literally down the cliffside and you know when you have a prime lens you're literally standing there but to get those birds you literally have to be super 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 zoomed in but no we can't do that on prime lenses because something has to give Luckily enough, I had this baby in my bag and I was able to take a really nice shot. I'll try to put it in here just so you can actually see it guys, but I was super proud and honestly if I didn't have a zoom lens I wouldn't be able to take that shot and now I'm actually thinking I do want to get into bird watching photography coming from a person who only knows seagulls, crows and pigeons as birds go and anything else I just Google image. Yeah, this is how I find out what the names of the birds are. I take a picture, then I send it to the Google image search, and then it returns back to me with results. Yay! Yeah, but trust me, at least I'm not pretending that I know everything. So my battery has died and I needed to rejig the camera again and just basically put the new camera in. Plus our 
daylight is going away because you know it's still winter months so just gonna wrap this up really fast because it might be getting super dark in like literally like half an hour or so so last bit of this video is i guess my personal prediction about how my kid is gonna be different this year or maybe next year um i don't know to be quite honest with you i feel like as if i got everything covered that i wanted to and especially with the restrictions if it's going to be giving me less opportunities to shoot outside i don't really need to get any more stuff then but um, i guess like if i do come across a uh, lumix leica f 1.4 25mm if the price is right i'd probably go for it because it's something that I want to replace my 25mm lens with and I know a lot of people will be saying that it's like f1.7 or f1.4 there isn't much of a difference but I think it's just because I have my Sigma lens that has been doing such a great job for me I am just have my eyes set on it and a lot of people are moving into the Sony systems right now so you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure yay, hopefully, ow Apart from that, the only other thing that I can think of that I might invest in, it's not really that much of an investment, it's more just kind of like something that I'll get eventually when I actually figure out how to use flash a little bit better. I do want to perfect the lighting in my photography right now because it's my weak point. It's just something that we have to know, it's like nobody's perfect and you just kind of like have to nitpick at your effort to just basically say this is where I'm doing shit and this is what I actually need to learn. So I'm going to be cramming a flash and one other thing that I can actually see myself getting is an umbrella with, you know, one of those brackets where you put your flash into an umbrella? So when the flash fires, the umbrella can't like, you know, spews the light onto the model. I honestly think that's about it, but I'm very curious to see the 2022J just summarizing to see has the kit changed much and as I said before it's just basically something that I'm doing for myself just because in the last year my kit has changed from pretty much one two two lenses and a small body now we have two bodies and one two three four lenses so like you just never know stuff just happens and like normally if you told me it's like that I'm gonna acquire more lenses and a new camera but it's not happening too expensive but things just happen I guess which is weird but who knows maybe you'll get somewhere eventually so yeah I hope you guys found this a bit informative and not super boring yay because I know I do rabble on quite a lot especially when it comes to photography because you can say I'm passionate about it but I think I'm just very nerdy about it and it's something that keeps me sane during the pandemic as well so I do hope I might be doing little bits and bobs about photography on my channel because now that I actually have more time there are certain things that just kind of like want to document if it actually is the right word and you never know maybe someone is going to learn from it or maybe someone has questions about how I do my weird artwork and maybe it could help someone out Anyways, have fun guys and I'll see you around. Bye!